if you had asked this question to me on uh, 2011 January, it was worth one dollar. Today, November 2021, exactly after say 10 years, it's worth uh, 65,000 dollars. It's about 48 lakh Indian rupees. That is why people are going crazy. People want to invest on this instrument because it gives very high returns. If you don't know how this technology works, stay away. Tomorrow, if something happens to your money, nobody is responsible other than you. Ethereum, Cardano, Polkadot, Stellar, Tether, Monero. Have you heard these names? I'm pretty sure that not many would have heard. Of course, there would be a few of them who would know what these names are. But then if I had mentioned how many of you have heard of uh, Bitcoin, I'm very sure that everybody would definitely say, yes, we've heard of Bitcoin. So today we will be talking about one of the most searched words, keywords on Google. Yes, that's about Bitcoin. And uh, whatever names I mentioned earlier, the Ethereum, Cardano, these are all cryptocurrencies. So cryptocurrency is basically two words. One, cryptography. And the second word, currency. Currency, we all know what it is. But cryptography is a method of transmitting data from A to B in such a way that only the sender and the receiver know what they are communicating and not anybody else. So cryptocurrency is basically sending money in such a way that it is using cryptography. And uh, the first cryptocurrency in the world came into existence on the 3rd of January 2009 and the name of that cryptocurrency is Bitcoin. And currently, as on November 2021, there are 7,000 cryptocurrencies in the world. But again, we only know of Bitcoin and maybe Ethereum and Litecoin, not others are very famous. Well, in the world, we use an identifiable object uh, such as a legal tender, which is the money for any services. For example, I deliver a lecture. I ask for payment in money. But before money came into existence, how did people transact? How did businesses happen? So earlier they used a system called barter system, wherein if I give one kilo of rice, somebody would give me two kilo of wheat or if I gave any object or anything in particular to somebody, they would give me something else in return and we call this as a barter system. But later on, people started using shells, people started using beads and uh, later came metal coins, gold coins, silver coins bronze coins and even gold bars people used to exchange but then it is not very easy right carrying gold bars in your pockets and going around and cutting it into pieces and giving it to people therefore came the concept of money and we call this as fiat money so fiat means by decree in latin there are governments in every country and uh, in the US you have the central bank, in India you have the reserve bank and the government prints money and you deposit that money in the bank. What does the bank do? They give that money as a loan to industries, to different people, they charge interest and then a part of that they give it to you for depositing the money. And this is basically the physical money which you transact. But off lately, we have seen in our country, uh, our Prime Minister is advocating on uh, uh, digital India where we use debit cards for transaction, we use credit cards, we use uh, uh, different wallets like Paytm, Google Pay and all that. But everything is linked to the physical money that you have deposited in the bank. Isn't it so? So this is how it works. Now, now just understand this. I have to give you 10 rupees. Okay. Now I send 10 rupees to your account. Now who takes 
a note of this who maintains the ledger this is basically maintained by the banks so there is a centralized ledger wherein when i send 10 rupees to you 10 rupees gets deducted from my bank account and gets added or deposited to your bank account otherwise what can i do i can take 10 rupees and send it to you send it to somebody else and send it to the third person if it is not maintained in real time we call this problem as the double spending problem in order to avoid this problem what do the banks do they maintain a ledger and this ledger is called the centralized ledger but again the entire control is with the bank, isn't it so? The banks give loans, there are certain government policies and there is a possibility if the loans get bad, like bad loans, there is a possibility that the money that you have kept in the bank may be at risk. This is possible, we have seen many instances. Therefore, many people wanted to have a type of a currency where the governments or the banks or any central authority did not have any control. So, you can also take this instance where if you have to send money from India to US, you can't send in rupees. You have to go to the bank. The bank has to convert the rupees into dollars and the dollar has to be sent to the US. So this gave birth to cryptocurrencies where there is no central authority. There is nobody to govern it. All the users who are coming to a conclusion that, okay, we will be using this cryptocurrency, they will be maintaining the details. Now, how do they maintain the details? I told you, in case of a conventional bank, there is a ledger, a centralized ledger. But in case of this, in case of cryptocurrency, there is no centralized ledger, but there is distributed ledger, which means every user who is using this particular cryptocurrency will be maintaining a ledger. So this way, the regulation of transactions that are done is possible so basically if you ask me uh, can i have a note or can i have a coin of bitcoin no there is no physical existence at all it is virtual it is virtual and that is why i don't use the word digital also if, when we talk about digital money your actual money is there in the bank we are only using technology for transaction but this is virtual there is nothing very difficult to comprehend, isn't it? I know that. So to understand how this Bitcoin works, we need to have strong concepts of computer science and mathematics. But I will be not getting into the details of this. Let me try to explain to you in as simple uh, terms as possible. Firstly, the Bitcoin is not like physical currency. It is virtual like unlike gold gold is physical you can keep it in the bank the value may appreciate after that when you take it and when you sell it you get more money but when it comes to bitcoin it doesn't happen that way it is virtual and that is why it's called as digital gold digital gold all right so second it is not centralized as i said it is distributed there is no single authority now where is the ledger the ledger is with everybody so whenever a transaction is done around 500 transactions are taken and put inside a block now that block is verified by set of people called as miners we call them as bitcoin miners so what is their job their job is to see that all the transactions are valid or not once it is verified the block is added into the ledger. I told you there are many ledgers. It is added into every ledger that is there in the network. In every ledger in the distributed network. So what happens? Everybody in the network gets a copy of the transaction that has happened. Now what is the benefit of this? You can never tamper it. If you tamper one, the remaining ones will not be tampered. It will be like that only. And this particular transaction will be showed as void. Therefore, we have to remember that currently 
360 GB one ledger size currently uh, that is there in the world and there are about 12,130 places where it is stored. So that is why we call the distributed ledger as tamper proof. Now you may ask why did the miners check and verify the transaction? What did they get for doing that? Well, for verifying the transactions, miners get a reward. And do you know how much the reward is? When the Bitcoin came into existence, for verifying a record, miners would get 50 Bitcoins. Yes, 50 Bitcoins. And it reduced into half every four years. So uh, it became 50, became 25, 25 became 12.5. Uh, Currently, you get 6.25 Bitcoins for verifying a transaction. Now the question is, how much is one Bitcoin worth? If you had asked this question to me on uh, 2011 January, it was worth $1. Today, November 2021, exactly after say 10 years, it's worth uh, $65,000. It's about 48 lakh Indian rupees. And that is why people are going crazy. People want to invest on this instrument because it gives very high returns. Is there any instrument that is there within 10 years it appreciates 65,000 times? I don't think so. That is why Bitcoin is currently a hot cake. Uh, now, if you ask me, uh, Anand, you told that there are about 7,000 different uh, uh, virtual currencies. Are they also appreciating? No. None of them are appreciating in the rate at which Bitcoin appreciates. So now how to use Bitcoins this is the question. So to use Bitcoins, number one, you need to have a wallet, Bitcoin wallet. Number two, you need to have Bitcoins in that. Now, how do you get Bitcoins? One, there are exchanges where you can give your Indian rupees and buy Bitcoins. This is one way or you can mine. You can mine the Bitcoins. You can solve those problems. The mathematical problem for every transaction. Why are those transaction problems there? To ensure that it is valid. There is no tampering happening. For that, we call these as miners. Now, these uh, miners get money. So that also you can put it in your wallet. Once you have money in the wallet, you can send the money and you can receive the money. Now, how is the money? It is virtual, I repeat. There is no physical money. It is virtual. You can send and receive. Every wallet will have two addresses. One is the public address, other one is the private address. We call that as public key and private key. If you share your public address to somebody, they can send money to that. Private key is used to access your address, your, your wallet. Now the question is, there are so many people who have forgotten their private key. They have forgotten it. They have got hundreds and thousands of bitcoins in their particular wallet but they have forgotten the key remember i told you this is distributed it is not centralized so if you have forgotten you cannot ask anybody give my password back give my key back no if you have forgotten the money is gone so as per the records it is saying that uh, uh, currently about 140 billion dollars 1 billion is about uh, 7500 crores so 140 billion dollars worth of uh, bitcoins have been lost or stranded in the wallets and uh, many organizations have now started accepting bitcoins you can use bitcoins for foreign fund transfers you can buy uh, goods using bitcoins or you can there are also certain atms where you can encash money or you can use these exchanges for in cashing money or buying bitcoins but currently there are many frauds who have come who have approached people by promising high returns for investing money in bitcoins my dear friends if you do not know about this bitcoins do not give your hard-earned money to these people definitely you will lose the money number one and number two is if you don't know how this technology works, 
stay away because in india if you ask me is this legal or illegal it is legal to use bitcoins in india but it is not regulated which means tomorrow if something happens to your money nobody is responsible other than you therefore be very careful when it comes to cryptocurrencies because cryptocurrencies may not be mentioned in the uh, indian uh, income tax act but whatever profits you generate from the cryptocurrencies you are liable to pay the income taxes there are many people spreading a lot of rumors telling that it is tax free or nobody will get to know not at all be aware that very soon the guidelines will come and you will be under the purview of that and if your computers are not secure if it is not secured properly there is a possibility that somebody may steal all the bitcoins that you have and we have seen many instances of bitcoins getting stolen therefore and also if you tell people that you have bitcoins your life may be at risk because there may be many people interested to steal your bitcoins therefore my humble request to all of you is bitcoins are not like physical currency there is no physical existence it is totally virtual you have to be very careful while using them if you ask me anant do you have bitcoins no i have never invested on cryptocurrencies and i don't see myself investing on something that i'm not very sure about now why am i not sure because it's highly volatile today if it is 48 lakhs tomorrow it may be 24 lakhs day after tomorrow 36 lakhs you never know you see the graph the graph is highly volatile so be careful don't fall prey to many of them coming and promising you high returns understand the technology in more depth if you want to trade with the bitcoins and uh, one more thing is if you do not know don't play with bitcoins thank you news 13 sakaratmaka vishayagalanna tiliyona ಸಮಾಜಕ್ಕೆ ತಿಳಿಸೋಣ